All right, it's late at night. Got the kids in bed. Finally get a chance to open the box of my supplies for this mount. Here's the mannequin. I did a straight on mount for this one just because of the way the rack is and where I want to put it on the wall. So I'll do the roughing and prepping for that tomorrow. Got some critter clay here, that's for the ears and all that other kind of stuff. And this box has probably a bunch of different goodies in it. Not sure if it'll come out in the audio, but we got the washing machine filling up over there. These are leather puncher here. For kind of helps when you're stitching up the back here. Not sure what that is in the bubble wrap there. There's my ears. Eyes are in there. Got the oil for the tanning. Some other finishing type stuff. Get to this tomorrow, hopefully. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, put the hanger on the back of the mannequin here. And since some of this work is going to involve me roughing up the hide here, or yeah, the mannequin, uh, I'll just put some goggles on now for safety. But this is just a simple three prong hanger. I'm going to go about three quarters of the way up. And I guess I can grab a ruler real quick and make sure I'm getting this centered. And that way it's right in the middle of the mannequin. Alright, one of the things I have here that I actually set it up last year is um, I just you know screwed so, a screw into the side of my table here and some sort of balancing screws on the side for this mannequin. Well for the one I did last year. So uh, the one I did last year was bigger, so these side ones I'll have to move in. But basically um, what I want to do right now, as far as getting this ready, is I'll start off with doing the roughing of the, the mannequin. So I'll get my stout rougher out and uh, rough this thing up. So this is the stout rougher. It's um, just got little metal teeth there on there. And this is going to help rough up the mannequin. And this will help with the adhesion with the glue. So you kind of want to go over the whole thing. Obviously you don't have to have one of these to do the roughing, but it just kind of actually makes it a little bit easy. So I went ahead and bought one. They're not very expensive. So this side of the mannequin is smooth and brand new. Haven't roughed it up yet. And then over here you can kind of see uh, this is what it's doing. Like this right in here, roughing it all up. So I'm going to rough the whole surface up and, um, and then I'll brush it all down. Alright, this step here, I'm going to, I have a flat end screwdriver and I'm going to be cutting it into my form or my, you know, my mannequin here and what that's going to do is when I go to tuck the, the hide in there, um, that's going to enable me to do it. So I'm sticking it in, you know, about that, you know, I'd say, what is that, about a quarter of an inch I'm, I'm sticking it in there and I'm just going to work my way up this tear duct to the eye. Sorry. 
So there's that one there. And then um, since I'm on this side with the video camera, you're going to do it all the way along the mouth, but you want to have it, you don't want to go straight in. You want an upward angle, as you can see here. So I'm going to be going all the way across this part of the mouth on that upward angle. And then you're going to be tucking your hide up in there. Now if you don't push it in far enough when you're going through here and you're going to tuck your hide and, you're, and you realize you're just not able to get it up in there far enough, you can always pause and grab a flat end screwdriver and, and do that. Alright, so there's my tear duct there. You can see the, for the tucking the lip. Now I want you to look at the nose. The nose cavity here, we're actually going to use a Dremel and dig that out deeper and um, in order to help make this clear look at the nose here I'm going to take you over to some of the mounts I already have done for comparison alright so <clears throat> I'm gonna just go over these are some mounts it's good if you have access to someone who has some deer mounts already done I would encourage you especially if this is your first time go and take a look at some of the details so I want to point out some details on these uh, and the first thing I want to look at is the nose. I want to point out how deep the nose cavity is. As I just showed you on the mannequin, they don't come as deep as this. Let me turn my little light on here. Try to, there you go. So you can see up in this nose cavity, this taxidermist who did this deer was a, an award-winning taxidermist. I mean, this guy was really good. He has a little bit of pink up in there for detail. Um, so uh, his eyes are, are just really well done. You can see the tear duct there. He actually put, um, you know, like a glistening type thing to try to give you that realistic look. Um, so another thing to note about the nose is the shape, the overall shape. It's, it's hard to get the nose really well done. There's little tiny um, round disc looking things uh, for texture. He also put like a... Uh, shiny enamel on there, you know, again, to make it look like the deer just licked its nose or something. Now this deer here, I was never really pleased with how this one came out. Um, I, I, some of this in here definition they tried to go for, um, it just, the actual natural deer didn't have any of that. And it just, it made the nose kind of look funny to me. And especially when they tried to texturize the nose, I felt like they went overboard. And I'm pointing that out. So because we're going to actually use something to add this type of texture later on in the process. And um, so I just always thought the nose looked a little bit funny on this one. And um, coloration wise, they used a little bit of a bluish black down in here. You can kind of see that. Uh, I, I prefer just the straight black. And if we look up in the nose cavity there, it does go deeply up in there. They didn't, um, you know, add any different color though, like the pink or whatever. So um, you just take note of this and, and decide how you want to try to do it. You can kind of see the nose looks a little bit kind of a little bit off right there. And it's tough. Now this is the first year I ever got. This, this mount was done in like around the year 1990, somewhere right around there. And um, they didn't texturize the nose. Um, it's, it might not come out too clearly. It's just painted black. And you can just see how deeply the nose cavity goes up in there. And, uh, you know, lips are tucked very nicely. Um, you can see how the eyes are. I'll just point out the eyes. You know, some taxidermists add this line here. And I kind of messed up. The very first time I tried to do a deer mount, my eyes were too closed and my wife didn't like it. So I ended up taking it apart and getting rid of it. You know, and this one over here has a little bit of that line kind of pressed in the we're going to be using clay to form all that 
All right, I'll be the first one to tell you, <clears throat> I bought one of these just to do this, so I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with them. And that means you can do this too. You can see how, where that nose is at right now, as far as how deep that nose cavity goes in. So I think a general good rule of thumb is to just, you know, take your time, good, you know, go easy, because um, you can't really rebuild it too easily. You can take more away if you need to. Um, now is one of the fun parts, you know, you really get to get an idea of what, what's coming together here. And I have my rack. I got to uh, create a shim to get this rack to sit just right on here. Now, when I cut it off, as I look at it, I'm about a half inch too low on the mannequin, so I'm going to, I'm just going to cut a piece of wood that's going to shim in there and bring it up here. Now there's a ridge, I'll get the camera here in a second and show you. There's a ridge that comes up the forehead, you want to connect that to the ridge that is on the, um, <clears throat> the rack itself. I can walk this over to you at least. There's a ridge right here that comes up the skull plate, and there's a ridge that runs right down the nose of the mannequin. I'm just going to... I mean, what you're going to do is line those two up like this. And, um, you know, so you look it over, you see I'm going to need a good size shim on this one. Um, and I'll work that shim in there. And I won't bolt this on yet because I'll still need to get the hide on the mannequin tomorrow. Um, but I'll at least have this ready to go. So once I get the mannequin over, excuse me, once I get the hide over the mannequin, and all you know it's all in place then I can actually slip this in and glue it on. Another thing to point out too here is you want to be conscious of the angle of the rack you know how this is positioned on the deer and you can also reference pictures uh, but typically I mean the way this one's lining up I think that right there is going to be perfect for how this this rack's going to be. So here is the rack just sitting there and right here is the ridge, and then the ridge on the skull plate. So let me just pick this up. So you know, you're going to line those up in the process, and then you come over here and you look. Okay, I need quite a shim there. You know, I'm going to probably be working with a piece of two by four, and uh, to make that shim. So I just cut this little piece to fit that underneath the skull plate. And I'm still going to need to do a little more shims underneath here, that, but that gets me a lot closer to where I need to be. I'll just let go. It's pretty close. I want to probably shim this side, the right side, up a little tiny bit. And um, there's a little bit of a gap in the front here. I'll do a little shim underneath of there, but that's, that's pretty good. <clears throat> 